So synthetic biology in five minutes. See how we can go. I don't think we, I can go into synthetic biology without first recognizing the innovation that really brings us together, which has started with this little device, the first transistor, 1947. Led to mainframe computers, ultimately to much cheaper computers, really democratizing information technology. We started to see a whole new generation of creativity come out of this garage, uh, literally, innovation and ultimately into the bedrooms of our homes. But it wasn't just the computer that really revolutionized the world. It was having something else, and you can probably recognize it. Can I get sound up on this? Uh, sand? Sound? It was this sound that ultimately connected us. And this is the sound of ideas becoming real. Printer. Without the printer, computers weren't that useful. Today, we're actually scanning everything. This is technology that allows you to scan workplaces and homes. We can easily start to put this into a world where we can manipulate it and ultimately be able to do designs like this, mash it up. And today's 3D printers in fact, sound remarkably like the first printers that came into the world. We, in 30 years, we've added one new dimension. But this is revolutionizing the way we make and manufacture. Let's talk about biotechnology now. This is life as technology. This is my favorite organism, E. coli. Four billion years old, does some pretty interesting things, and you'll never look at sausages the same way. <laughs> Cells are 3D printers. Biochemistry is 3D printing. We already know that enzymes, polymerases, ribosomes, etc., do absolutely amazing chemistry. And ultimately, they're 3D printers that make more 3D printers. It's all programmable by DNA. DNA is really just software. This is how we used to manipulate DNA. <laughs> Cut and paste. It's really slow. It took a long time. It takes specialized kitchens like this to do it. It was hard work. Biology's gone digital. This is really the key significance in my field. Now we can read DNA incredibly quickly. No other technology has moved faster than reading DNA. We can now, we have word processors for DNA. Drag and drop. And now, significantly, with synthetic biology, we can print DNA. It's like a 3D printer for the DNA molecule. So synthetic biology is just genetic engineering. That's all it is. We've been doing it for 40 years, except it's done with digital tools. And because it's done with digital tools, it's accessible to anyone. We can all do it. Biology is becoming an IT industry. These are some of the students I've worked with over the last 10 years. There's been over 10,000 of them go through MIT learning how to do synthetic biology. Now it's coming to community labs like this one in Brooklyn. They're popping up all over the United States and the world. We're even seeing the, the, the formation of bedroom biotech. This is a licensed biotech lab. And the really smart folks are doing this in high-throughput automated ways. This is a startup company called Ginkgo Bioworks. It's all robots, and they're pretty clear. The organism is the product. Biotech just got the lid blown off. We're going to genetically engineer everything, and I mean everything. We know that all of life really came you know, through Darwinian evolution, three rules. Eat, don't get eaten, have babies. We're <laughs> entering a territory here that we simply don't understand now. It's, it goes way beyond just franken foods and synthetic bacteria. It's things like synthetic yeast. We're, we'll have that in about two years now. We've already ported the opiate drugs to yeast. We've already ported cannabis. We've already ported LSD you can start to see drug making gets interesting, and so does <laughs> beer making. It's glowy bacterium. It's glowy cats. 
It's resurrecting animals that haven't existed for thousands of years. It's doing exobiology and learning about other planets. It's about potentially cyborgs and cyborgs with glowy cats. <laughs> it's about transhumanism and possibly even cheating death. We don't know. It's really different. My whole world, though, is about viruses. To me, viruses are the ultimate intractable organisms at this point. They're biological software. They're incredibly diverse. I think they're the next foundation for drug development. Antibiotics, cancer, vaccines, gene therapies, all through viruses. And of course, comes complete with whole new aspects on bioterrorism, biohacking, and ultimately biosecurity. Here's the reading list you might find useful, and thank you for your time. Thank you.